Another way we can contribute to the oneness, rejecting false stories that are designed to separate us from Jehovah's organization. As an example, think about the apostate-driven lies and dishonesties that Jehovah's organization is permissive toward pedophiles. I mean, that is ridiculous, isn't it? Uh, in your statement, you also say that reporting to the police is a personal decision for a victim and his or her parents if, if uh, a minor. Is it a personal decision for an elder as to whether to report to the police something that's been reported to the elder which might constitute a crime? Is it, is it the uh, elder's responsibility to do that? Is, is that a, what you're asking? Is it the elder's personal decision as to whether to report information received by the elder uh, that would amount to a crime? No, it's, it's not the elder's decision. We respect the right of the person who has been... Um, uh, who has who has been a victim, we, we, we reserve her the right or his right to do that. If, we uh, will do everything we can to support it. If uh, it's a different crime to take the most extreme murder, if you were told that a member of the congregation had killed someone else, would you report that to the police? We would, we would encourage the person to okay. do that. Would you, would you do it yourself? No, I, I I would try very hard not to. Uh, not that I would try very hard not to, but I would encourage the person continually to do that. That's a decision that they need to make. Well, what if the person wasn't prepared to go to the police, but they told you that they saw the killing happen? What would you do? Are you? Am I being asked on the present day circumstances? Yeah. Yes, I would. I would take the the action of ringing the branch and getting some legal advice on that. Do you have any knowledge? Which, you're living in Queensland, aren't you? Yes. Do you have any knowledge of the law or legal obligations to report knowledge of crimes at all? Not, not really, no. Um, yeah. Do you know of any case, uh, Mr Ally, in which an elder has reported a criminal matter to the police? No, I can't say that I have. There is there no single witness may convict another for any error or any sin that he may commit. On the testimony of two witnesses, or on the testimony of three witnesses, the matter should be established. And what's the context for that discussion? I would like to read it all right through to get the context. I'm sorry. Well, we, won't stop to do, we won't stop to do that now. But um, I understand where the Jehovah's Witness place their confidence, but do you accept that we have a true conflict between an understanding that we all have of human behaviour and, as you say, your capacity to believe that she was telling the truth and what might be, by reason of adherence to that particular um, piece in the Bible, uh, a conflict? I put a lot of store by what that principle says. Uh, and I have a, a lot of store also to believe that other things will come out that would provide that, but on the ground of uh, one person's word against another, uh, we cannot act judicially any further. No, but you appreciate the civil courts can. Oh, well, that's that's where there's a difference for the civil court then. But do you appreciate the civil courts can? On one person's word, yeah. I'm not. Uh, hmm? Uh, I don't know about the civil court, Your Honour. You don't know. What I'm, what I'm trying to get to is whether you accept that there is a 
conflict between what the Bible's telling you and what your experience as a human being tells you about capacity to accept one person's word against another based upon your own assessment of what they're saying. I don't believe that's correct, Your Honour. I, I, I really believe that uh, I was saying there, I, having one witness, you can't establish it beyond any doubt. You can't act on that. If you have a, another witness to something similar that that person has done, yes, then we've got two witnesses. But on the, on the evidence of one, I'm, that's my understanding, is that we cannot act. And I, that's, yes, that's how I... Say that in the face of telling me that you believe what she told you. Yes. Even though at that point it was word on word. Yes, we believed her. Applying scripture... Uh, as we read it, in the, in the best way we can to, to sensitively integrate with, with uh, modern society. But you understand the point. There, there may well be, and we're in one such area where science has taught us a lot in recent years about sexual abuse and how to appropriately respond to it. But if that science was in conflict with your understanding of the Bible, then the Bible would prevail. Uh, abs absolutely, the Bible will prevail. And if I could, Your Honour, that's why hundreds of Jehovah's Witnesses are in prison in South Korea, in Taganrog, Russia, Azerbaijan, Eritrea, because they won't budge on a clear Bible um, principle that will endure forever. So if the law of the country was to prescribe a, ma a mode of behaviour which was in conflict with your understanding of the Bible, what would happen then? Uh, we would... Um, uh, uh, apply the words in the, in the book of Acts 5.29 to obey God as ruler rather than men and as we did here during the Second World War as thousands of Jehovah's Witnesses did when they refused to um, come under the Nazi regime the fact that the government at the time makes a, a law Jehovah's Witnesses will always uh, obey scripture and that's why that's why we have 25, 28 uh, successful outcomes in the European Court of Human Rights because we won't budge where there's a clear Bible principle that happens to be in conflict with uh, the government. You mean it was only when the matter went to court that you understood the serious nature of the events that had happened? No, no, it was well, well before that. It was when um, the motions we started to go through when it became something that was clearly uh, a, a real victimisation of, of a young person by her parent that all of us elders then acted very swiftly in, in dealing with that situation. Now, this may have been a prelude to that. I don't know. I cannot recollect this particular uh, discussion, but well, we'll come, the other things... We'll come to what you did do in response to what you knew, but... Is it right to understand that the teaching of your church requires someone who has a disagreement with another member of the congregation to first of all seek to put matters right with that other person? That, that would be the first step. So what BCG says in her statement about her conversation with you and your response is con your response is consistent with the teaching of the church. Is that right? It should be, yes. But well, I... if the response that she says you made, as I understand it, from what you've told me, is consistent with the teachings of the church. That is, no, you have to talk to your father first. I, again, well, Your Honour, I'm sorry, but I, I can't recollect no, that. No, 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 come back. Uh, what she says, you said, as I understand it, is consistent with the teachings of the church. That is, you've got to speak to your father first. Generally, if it was something of a minor concern, yes. Well, you don't know from this conversation no, whether it's major or minor. Hmm. So do I uh, then understand that what you're saying to us is that what she reports you as having said is consistent with the teachings of the church. I would have to think very carefully on, 
on that whole aspect because if I could remember the rest of a conversation that one might have, then perhaps I can comment, but I cannot recall well, I'm sorry, this having happened. I'll have to put it to you again. We're just looking at the conversation that she says occurred. Now, you may not remember it, mm. but that's what she says happened. What I want to know is whether that conversation, as she records it from you, is consistent with the teachings of the church, and that is, no, you've got to talk to your father first. If, if this did really happen, I'm not doubting that it did, then it would be consistent with myself to follow through and have a discussion with her and uh, to also uh, approach the parent if it was of something of concern, yes. I'm lost. She says you said, no, you have to talk to your father first. Now, as I understand it from what you've already told me, a statement such as that by you is consistent with the teachings of the church. It would be, yes, yes. Uh, do you recall?